Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley and in this video I'm at Little Gidding in the county, the historic county of Huntingdonshire. Now Huntingdonshire is associated historically very much with Oliver Cromwell. He was MP for Huntingdon, for example. But also in the 17th century the area is associated with all this little village and the little church behind me, which as you can see is very little, is associated with a man called Nicholas Ferrer and the Little Gidding family. Now, the Little Gidding family is established in that period in the run-up to the Civil War. Nicholas Ferrer had been a, a London merchant, he'd been a member of the Virginia Company, the company that set up and ran Virginia, it was set up by, among other people, Sir Walter Raleigh, and then Ferrer is in the second generation. And James I decided that he wanted to basically end the Virginia Company, and being James I, he got his way eventually. Ferrer and some family members retired to a manor house at Little Gidding. Now, the manor house has disappeared. There's nothing left of it today. There may be some remnants in the modern, or say modern, relatively modern farmhouse. But really all that survives from Nicholas Ferrer's day here is the church that you can see behind me. That facade is not, although it looks 17th century, it's actually 18th century. The chapel, the parish church rather, the church and the manor house were both very badly damaged in the Civil War and the front of the church seems to have been demolished. It's now perhaps 8-10 feet shorter than it would have been originally. And what you have with Cromwell and Ferrer is you have two different tendencies within the Church of England at the time. We might have to remember that the Puritans are originally within the Church of England. They're not nonconformists. They are people who are the Anglicans, but they regard the Church of England as being insufficiently reformed. But then on the other hand, on the other side, you have the Laudians those who would later be referred to as Anglo-Catholics, and they had the opposite approach. They said the Church of England is a Catholic church, and the Church of England... Now, they were anti-papalist. Anti they opposed the Pope of Rome with all their might. They didn't believe that the Church should be subject to the Pope, but nevertheless they felt that the Church of England was a, a branch of the historic Catholic Church, and that the Middle Ages were not a complete disaster, and certainly the and even the later Middle Ages. Now, although the, the Ferrer family here at Little Gidding would be nicknamed the Arminian Nunnery, and that's in part, of course, because the Laudian Party, the other, another distinction, the Laudian Party tended to be Arminian in the sense of holding to a, a general redemption, whereas the Puritans tended to be... Uh, well, the Puritans were, with a couple of exceptions of most notably John Goodwin, the Puritans were Calvinistic to varying degrees. So the Puritans are Reformation, Reformation is a good thing, and they very much insist upon the Augustinian position that Christ's death is intended to save the elect. Now the question is what, there is a question, what is the reference, if any, to the non-elect? And Richard Baxter would be one of a number of Puritans who held to some sort of provision of the non-elect as well. Um, but the, the, main, the Puritan mainstream is Calvinistic, whereas the non-Puritan, and particularly the Laudian mainstream, is Arminian. And because the Pharaohs set up this community here, and it is a community, it's not a, a monastery, there are no, no vows, Ferrer himself, Nicholas Ferrer, is celibate, he never marries, but that, of course, I speak from experience, doesn't mean that you've taken vows and doesn't mean that you're a Roman Catholic. Um, he had family members, sisters, who, uh, and there are other people associated with them who, again, were celibate. But they weren't all celibate, and there were no vows. There were, it was very much based around prayer and reading, and they also produced Bible concordances. Now they did that by buying up Bibles and chopping them up and essentially putting the text, because that's what you could do in those days, you know, cut and paste in the 17th century meant literally, we have scissors, we cut, we have glue, we paste. 
um, today we're, we're so spoiled but here we are anyway little gidding and let's let's have a look around and we'll uh, talk about a few things on the way and so first of all here is the church this is the west end um, we're at a slight angle here because of the lie of the land but if we put it that way you can see perhaps a bit more that we are on a slope here. You will notice outside the front door there is a table tomb. That is Nicholas Farrer, the founder of uh, the Little Gidding community. And as we pan over this way, we have the um, orchard. Beyond there is Farrer House, which is currently being um, undergoing ma major restoration work. But Farrer House is uh, um, normally, at, and of course, one of the things is that the COVID business means that they've said, well, if we're not getting visitors, we, we will close. But normally there's an exhibition and everything in there. Um, just move the camera very slowly, very gently, and we can see over here now. Here we are on the platform on which the old manor house was built. And you can just see the fields beyond and a dip in the landscape. Because, of course, uh, and then down there there's a pond. The pond. So here we are. And this is the, the chapel, the, the, the church. It is a parish, it's actually a church. I keep referring to the chapel, it's actually a church. Um, there was a medieval parish church here. This is a medieval, um, a really lost village, although there are some houses here. It's really a lost village, and then Farrah comes, and again, the, the facade is a, a later addition. So we move slowly in. I'll, we'll just um, pause the camera and go round the outside. And so here is a little Gidding church. You see the um, stone at the bottom and then the uh, wonderful, uh, mellow, 17th century red brick above. The, the vestry, now the oratory, is uh, 19th century. Vestries are very much a 19th century thing. And Nicholas Farrow was in deacon's orders. Remember, this is Anglican church. And in the Anglican church, the diaconate is... It really a kind of preparation of the priesthood, though Nicholas Ferrer never proceeded to become a presbyter. Um, you see, there's Ferrer House, so that's probably on the site of his, of the old manor house, although I say part of the site because the manor house was certainly a bigger building because we, we have descriptions of it as being quite a large manor house. And so this is, uh, and you, you can see there, there's his tomb. Now, According to accounts, his tomb was directly outside the door, but you can see there's actually quite a distance. And this is why there is this probability that the building has been shortened in length. There's also a possibility that the, uh, the, origi the chapel originally, or the, the church rather, originally, and this is a, it's a 17th century rebuild, 17th century build, um, and the probability it was originally built, uh, um, it's built on the site of a medieval building, and probably it was originally longer, um, and of course it's, it's next to the manor house where the, the family lived. And so here we are on the hill in the graveyard at the back and you can see how tiny it is. It's this tiny little building. Uh, it's, there was, there's very little in the way of people living in the neighbourhood. It really is it's a, a chapel that's built for the manor house. It's built by Nicholas Ferrer for him and his community, his family. Um, and it's actually a lovely example of the 17th century, really. Um, they would have daily services here as well as having meetings and things in the manor house, in the, in the home uh, you know, where they lived. The, uh, um, so, yes, that's the, the outside. That is the, the, now the, the chancel has been partially rebuilt. Uh, 19th, 18th, 19th century restorations. The, but in the 19th century, I wanted it to look a bit more um, authentic, if you will. Of course, it's not authentic at all, but it's making it look a bit more 17th century, as they say. So there we are. And so here we are in the West End at Little Gidding. Now, essentially, it is a 17th century building that uh, Nicholas Ferrer built, but there's some obvious alterations. First of all, the seating. Today you've got these stalls that very much make it feel monastic, but the stalls are not original. The stalls, in fact, are, although there were benches, the stalls are 19th century. 
Um, there was a major restoration here in the 19th century. And originally, what you had was the nave was known as the preaching place. This is, of course, where preaching happened. And then the chancel was the reading place where the reading happened. The, the uh, decoration, I mean, the, obviously that is not original, but it's, there would have been something like it. We've got here the, the, the walls, the, the carving around the walls is original. The font is not original. There is further down, and we'll just move forward slowly. Um, there is further down, just to the, the join between the preaching place and the reading place. Now, just pause here. And originally, there would have been a pulpit in the corner here. The lectern is original. It is brass, and it was uh, at some point bunged in the pond and then was fished out again. We, we're not sure why, and was it that during the Civil War, when the parliamentary army attacked the area, that they threw it in the pond because they regarded it as popish? Um, and you get all kinds of stories, and most of them are just things people have made up to try and make sense of what they see. But uh, that is the, the lecture, and we'll just move a little bit further forward. There's a number of memorials in here to members of Ferrer's household. So, um, this is the, it's the three, six, 1650, 1640s, 50 years uh, um, that you've got some of these memorials are put up. And at the East End, you can see there's a, a Venetian window. That is not original, of course. There would have, in fact, there was originally not a window, though. If there was, it was a very small one. Um, and the commandments that you see there, the commandments and the um, Lord's Prayer and the, the Creed, they are original. They are 17th century. They are fairer. And fairer also had the panelling on the walls put in. But the, well, there we are, there's the lectern again. But the communion table is not original because somebody pinched the original one. And so it had to be replaced. Uh, one, one is quite annoyed about these things. Um, there is no great value in it, uh, and except as being the communion table's little gidding, and communion tables should not be stolen. So oh yeah, up into what would have been the reading place, what is the, the, now the chancel, because this was a, and is a parish church. Now the parish is now united with that of great gidding, or and steeple gidding. But it was a parish church, it had its own minister in the 19th century, through the 19th century. Um, very often, of course, it would actually be joined with one of the other parishes, but it was not officially joined until later. The commandment boards, and I'll talk to the wind, to get to a bit of this, it's up on the window, but the commandment boards are fairer originals. They are. 17th century, they are on brass. There's so much of an effort here, although many of the fittings have been altered. There's only an effort to try to keep the fittings as original looking as possible, as pan around the interior. And there we are looking all the way west. And there's the lectern again. And um, I see it's tiny. It's tiny, but. It's a very special place, Little Gidding. People, have, people come from all over, all over the world to see it. It reflects a type of 17th century piety that really disappeared because by the 18th century, you have, you know, 18th century you have a change and it becomes very much the age of reason. And so a reasonable Christianity, a reasonable religion, is the, the watchword. And something like this, that in some ways harks back to the Middle Ages, or is an attempt, perhaps better put it, is an attempt to try to continue the, the tendencies of medieval Christianity into the 17th century. There's the ceiling. Um, that becomes regarded as 
why should we do that? Why, why should we try to stand in this sort of continuity with the ages of quote unquote superstition and barbarism, which they're not? Um, and so the movements in the 18th century become different. So there we are. Let's go, let's stroll outside again and have a bit of a bit of a closing word. And so we're outside again. So. Some closing words. Little Gidding represents something that uh, is very much of its own type, sui generis. There's nothing like Little Gidding. It's not a monastery, it's a community of Christian people living together, observing a rule in the sense that there was an order to the household, but not a rule in the sense of having vows or anything like that. It represents something that happens in the 17th century and then disappears. In the 19th century, you have the attempt to revive the monastic life, but this is not the monastic life. This is um, a, a group of really impoverished gentry. We're not to think of Nicholas Ferrer as being a rich man who is indulging in some hobby or other. No, he's a failed merchant. He's a man whose attempts to become rich, not that he's heading to become rich to exploit people, but simply that he's trying to be a successful merchant, because that's what you try and do in, if you're a merchant, you're not trying to be an unsuccessful merchant, are you? Um, but his attempts to become a successful merchant trading with North America fail. He retires to live this religious life with uh, friends and family members here at Little Gidding. They had children from the area, they had orphan children living with them. It, they had a school here. It was a very strange kind of life in many ways. They had bishops and kings even visited here. And yet Nicholas Farrer is just, he's a man on his own doing his own thing. His death means that the, the community essentially dissolves and of course civil war means it dissolves and that's it. And by the time civil war is over, things have moved on. There's the Great Ejection, 1662 the uh, Laudian movement uh, peters out in many ways and you get the 17th century it's a very different dynamic in terms of church church types and who's doing what so there we are little gidding it's a, a strange place and a little bit of the 17th century but a very lovely piece of 17th century England well thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope that uh, you find this helpful I enjoy making it I enjoyed coming out here to beautiful Huntingdonshire on this lovely summer's day and by the time this goes out it uh, may very well be in the autumn but thank you for watching and may God bless you and keep you. Amen.